Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today, we will talk about one of the fascinating topics, that is, the object-oriented programming in c -sharp. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have daily updates on multiple technologies. So, if you are a tech geek in a continuous hunt for latest technological trends, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. Now, without any further ado, let's get started with the agenda for today's session. First, we will define the object-oriented programming in c -sharp. Following that, we will discuss the differences between object-oriented programming approach and procedural programming approach. Later, we will look into object-oriented programming in c -sharp. Last but not least, we will discuss the benefits of object-oriented programming in c -sharp. So, I hope I made myself clear with the agenda. Now, let's get started with our first topic. That is, understanding the concept of procedural programming. So, what exactly is procedural programming? Procedural programming entails writing procedures or methods that perform operations on data. Whereas, object-oriented programming entails creating objects that contain both data and methods and encapsulate it together in one single object or a class. Now, a best example for procedural programming would be C programming language. Now, let us understand what is object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm that organizes software design around classes and objects. Now, let's take a look at what classes and objects mean in object-oriented programming in c -sharp. Classes are blueprints used to determine an object's properties and behaviors. And objects are real-world entities with their fundamental properties and behaviors. Now, Let's look at a real-world example of classes and objects. So, on my screen, we have a car. So, this particular car happens to be an object. So, how can you define classes and objects in c -sharp using a car? So, here, you can see that I have a blueprint of the same car. Now, blueprint is one single entity. And using this blueprint, I can create n number of cars which happens to be objects. So here, the blueprint of this car is considered as a class and the cars, actual cars, which are constructed or built using the blueprint is called as the object. So, a class is the foundation of any modern object-oriented programming language in c -sharp. In OOP's languages, it is required to create a class to represent data. A class is a blueprint for an object that contains variables for storing data and methods or functions for performing methods or functions on that particular data. Now that we have discussed the fundamentals of a class and object, let's move ahead into the next concept. So each and every object that you create will have its own variables and methods that are used to manipulate the values stored in the variables. So here in this particular example of car, you can consider the start, drive, and stop methods which are involved in the object functions. Now, let's move ahead into the next topic, that is, understanding the four fundamental principles of object-oriented programming concepts in c -sharp. So basically, object-oriented programming in, repeat. So basically, object-oriented programming in c -sharp is categorized into four fundamental principles. The first one being encapsulation, followed by that we have inheritance, next we have abstraction, and finally we have polymorphism. Now, let us understand each one of these concepts in detail. So first, let's get started with encapsulation in c -sharp. So at first we have encapsulation. Encapsulation is the process of combining a data member and the method into one single unit or class. Encapsulation is the process of enclosing something in a capsule, that is having an object related operations and data within that particular object. Now, let us have an example. So, one of the most tangible examples of encapsulation is a school bag. Our books, pen and other belongings can be stored in our school bag. Now, to understand encapsulation in a much better way, let's go through a practical example. So, on my screen you can see an example for encapsulation. In this particular example, 
we are going to encapsulate the methods for finding the area of the given shape. So here we are considering the rectangle shape. So in this particular rectangle application class, you will have all the get area functions which calculate the area of a rectangle and also the variables length and width. So now let's execute this program and see the output. So there you go, the code has been successfully executed and as you can see we have provided the length and width of this particular rectangle as 4.5 and 3.5 respectively and the area has been calculated as 15.75. Now let us go through a simple exercise. Now I have calculated the area of rectangle, how about you guys calculate the area of square? maybe a circle as well and a triangle. Please try these exercises on your own and let us know in the comment sections below. Now let's move ahead into the next concept of object oriented programming with C sharp. So the next topic in object oriented programming in C sharp is inheritance. So inheritance is a crucial concept in C sharp object oriented programming. Inheritance is a concept in which parent and child classes are defined. The child class inherits the parent class methods and properties, but they can also change the behavior of the methods if necessary. If required, the child class can define its own methods. Here is a pictorial representation of inheritance that shows a child class is inheriting the properties from the parent class. or a derived class is inheriting the properties of its base class. Now let's look at another example. Inheritance is a mechanism by which a child object acquires all the properties of the parent class. Here you can see that children are inheriting the properties and behaviors of their parents. Now there are four different types of inheritances available in C sharp. That is, single inheritance, multi-level inheritance, hierarchical inheritance and lastly, multiple inheritance. As you can see, in single inheritance, we have one base class or the parent class and one child class or the derived class. The properties and methods of A are been inherited by B in one single stage. And similarly, when you come across multi-level inheritance, you have three classes, A being the parent class and B being the child of A class and C being the child class of both A and B. Here, C can inherit the properties of both A and B classes. In the third type, which is the hierarchical inheritance, multiple child classes acquire the properties and behavior of one single parent. In the last inheritance type, that is the multiple inheritance, one child class can derive or inherit the properties of multiple parents. Here, the child class D is inheriting the properties of A, B and C parent classes. Now with that, let's go ahead and understand each one of them in detail. So as discussed, single inheritance is defined as having one base class and one derived class. And similarly, Multi-level inheritance is when one class inherits another and that particular class is also inherited by another parent class. You can see C is inheriting properties from B and B is inheriting properties from A. C can also inherit properties from A as well via B. Now let's understand the third one that is the hierarchical inheritance. This is the type of inheritance in which multiple classes are derived from single base class. When a single class feature is required by multiple classes, this type of inheritance is used. Now at last we have the multiple inheritance. Multiple inheritance occurs when one derived class or child class accesses a property of its multiple parent or base classes. Now to understand inheritance in a much better way, let's try to execute an example based on inheritance. Now on my screen you can see an example for inheritance. Here. We have a parent class that is the vehicle. So this particular class has one method that is honking function. Now the child class happens to be a program called car 
and this particular program will execute the methods which have been derived from its parent class that is honking. Here you can see the object created using the child class is executing the method honk from its parent class. Now let's try to execute this simple program and see how it works. Now you can see that the program got successfully executed and it is executing the toot toot function that is honking function. Now that you have understood the fundamentals of inheritance, this is one simple exercise for you where you try to execute the single inheritance, multi-level inheritance, multiple inheritance and hierarchical inheritance. Don't worry if you run into some issues while executing the code. Feel free to write us down in the comment section below and our team of experts will be happy to resolve all your queries. If required for learning purposes, we will also send the code we have for all these examples and also exercises. Now with that, we have finished the second part of object oriented programming in C Sharp. Now let's continue with the next one. That is the process of abstraction. So data abstraction is a process of displaying the necessary information. Abstraction is the process of showing only essential features of an object to the outside world while hiding the other irrelevant information according to a proper definition. In a nutshell, abstraction is a process of representing the essential feature without representing the background details. Abstraction allows you to concentrate only on what the object does rather than how it does. By providing relevant information, abstraction offers a generalized view of your classes or objects. Now, abstraction is a process of concealing an object's working style while understandingly displaying its information. Now, to understand abstraction in a much better way, let's go through this example where we have a coffee machine. An example of abstraction is making coffee with a coffee machine. To make coffee, you must learn how to use coffee machine. You must simply supply water and coffee beans and turn it on and choose the type of coffee you want. You are least bothered about how the coffee machine is functioning to prepare your coffee. All you care about is your coffee. So that's how abstraction works in real time. Now let's go through a practical demonstration of abstraction in Visual Studio using C Sharp. So in this particular example on my screen, you can see abstraction method for animal. And in this particular class, you can see that the animal sound function and animal sleep function are defined. Now in the main class, you can see that we're just calling the animal sound function and animal sleep function. Now we are least bothered about how the function operates. We are just worried about the operationality of these functions. Now let's try to execute this simple program and see an output. Now you can see the code got successfully executed. And here we have called the sleep function and sound function of an animal called pig. Now with this, let's go ahead into the next and last type of object oriented concepts in C sharp that happens to be polymorphism. Now the term polymorphism refers to the presence of multiple forms. Polymorphism is frequently expressed in the object oriented programming paradigm as one interface, multiple functions. Polymorphism can be static or dynamic. The response to a function is determined at compile time in static polymorphism. In dynamic polymorphism, it is decided at runtime. Now, let us look at one real life example of polymorphism. Here, you can see one single person who performs multiple tasks. At one stage, he works as an employee for a company. And another stage, he is a successful parent. And at the last stage, he is also performing some shopping. So here, one person acts as an employee at work, father at home, and a customer at shopping malls. This can be considered as a decent example for polymorphism. Now, there are two different types of polymorphisms. The first one being static or compile time polymorphism, and the second one being dynamic or runtime polymorphism. Now let's look at these in detail. So static polymorphism is exemplified by method overloading. Method or function has the same name, but different signatures while overloading. It is also known as compile time polymorphism because the decision to call which method is made at 
compile time. And the second type is the runtime polymorphism. Late binding is another term for dynamic or runtime polymorphism. The method name and signature are used as number of parameters and parameter type must be same and may have a different implementation. Dynamic polymorphism is demonstrated by method overloading. Now let's understand polymorphism in detail using a practical example. So on my screen you can see an example for method overloading or compile time polymorphism in C sharp. So you can see here we have addition function right we have addition function written two times with the same name as well but there is one simple difference it is in the signature so in the first add method we have two parameters and in the second add method we have three parameters now c sharp will decide which add method to be called based on the number of parameters you pass so here in the main function you can see we are calling the first add method by giving only two parameters so C sharp will decide this particular add method to be called based on the number of parameters passed. Similarly, the second one, it will decide, I mean C sharp will decide that the second add method will be called based on three parameters that you have passed. Now let's try to execute this and see the output. Now you can see the program got successfully executed and the output of the numbers is also displayed here. Now with that, Let's try to execute another example based on polymorphism, but this time let us try to execute an example for runtime polymorphism. So on my screen you have an example for runtime polymorphism. So we have one function for drawing and calculating the area of all the shapes. We have three different shapes that is circle, square and rectangle. Now in the main function we are calling the drawing function and also the finding the area function. So here C sharp decides which particular function to be called or which particular function that belongs to a particular shape to be called based on the runtime data it receives. So all the three different shapes have three different formulae and three different datas. So according to the data provided C sharp will decide which particular function to be called in runtime. Now let's try to execute this program and see the output. Now there you go, the program got successfully executed and all the areas of three different shapes has been calculated here. Now with that we have come to the last part of this C sharp OOPS tutorial. That is benefits of object oriented programming in C sharp. So the first benefit of object oriented programming in C sharp is abstraction. So by using abstraction you can improve the problem solving in an effective way. Now the next one is inheritance. So using inheritance, you have one major advantage where you can reuse your code. Followed by that, you have encapsulation. So by using encapsulation, you can find troubleshooting to be easier. Now, the last one is polymorphism. So by using polymorphism, you can add flexibility to your code. Not just these, there are also much more benefits of using object-oriented programming using c -sharp. Now with that, we have come to an end of this tutorial. If you have any queries regarding any of the topics covered in this session or if you need the code that we have executed in this particular tutorial or if you need help or assistance during your exercises discussed during this tutorial, then please feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be happy to resolve all your queries. Until next time, thank you, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.